Uh, joining us now is the chairman of the Assembly Transportation Committee, John Wisniewski. Assemblyman, good of you to join us. Uh, first of all, were you Thanks surprised? You. Did you go into this and actually think uh, that Mr. Uh, uh, Wildstein was actually going to answer any of those questions? Well, I frankly had a suspicion that he might take refuge in the Fifth Amendment on some questions, but I find it unacceptable that he took refuge in the Fifth Amendment on every single question. A question as simple as, did you formally work at the Port Authority? Up until now, I didn't know that admitting to that could subject you to criminal charges, but that's what his attorney argued to the committee. Uh, we asked him to verify the authenticity of the documents that were in front of the committee. He refused to answer. Now, these are documents that he provided. We wanted to know who was on the other end of the communication chain. Um, he's already waived any objection to questions about those documents by submitting them, but yet again, he frustrated the work of the committee by seeking refuge in the Fifth Amendment. His attorney said something very intriguing at the end there. You know, if state f officials, if federal prosecutors were willing to perhaps grant him immunity, then perhaps he'd be willing to answer more questions. If he were immunized, first of all, would you like to see him immunized? I'd like to see him answer questions. I'd like to see him be accountable for his actions. Uh, I recognize that those may be uh, two goals that are incompatible, but as a starting proposition, I'd like to see him answer for what he's done, but I'd also like to see him be totally forthcoming. Mike, this is an abuse of public resources, an abuse of public trust. Uh, we cannot uh, sugarcoat this and we cannot make it into something it's not. This was a horrendous episode, you know, not just for how it makes our state look, but for the public trust, which has been, uh, once again, uh, actions by this governor have eroded the public trust. Well, you got a chance before the uh, hearing today. The governor spent two hours apologizing, answering questions. Uh, did you feel that he was straightforward enough? Do you believe his explanation that he doesn't know about this, he didn't know how it happened, he had no knowledge beforehand, didn't know about it until, I guess, yesterday morning? Well, the governor could have apologized to the people of Fort Lee in September. Instead, he actually belittled the people of Fort Lee in September. And it took until January, four months later, for the governor to finally man up and apologize like he should have. But, but you're but saying, the that matter, but he's, he's saying that he didn't know until he saw those emails. Do you believe him or not? Well, I, I think it strains credibility. Uh, let's put it that way, Mike. This is a governor, and you know this. Is, you, you've been around the state as well. It's a governor who runs a very tight ship. There are no independent operators in that organization. Uh, I, I'd like to understand how a deputy chief of staff, Bridget Kelly, has the kind of authority to call David Wildstein, uh, not an insignificant political player, and give him an order to create traffic in Fort Lee. And he basically says, yes, ma'am. Right away, ma'am. And, and so it strains credibility that it's just simply a rogue operation by Bridget Kelly. It well, strains she credibility. Well, answered to Kevin O'Dowd, and, and the governor said O'Dowd knew nothing about this. Do you believe that? I, I guess that it strains credibility. It strains credibility that he fires the state party chairman just simply on the basis that he called somebody an idiot, or is there more to it? That's why there's just so many more questions that need to be answered. Look, you know, if the governor is true to his words and he's very sorry about what happened and he wants to get to the bottom of it, turn over all of the email communications, both personal and governmental, that the front office has on this issue. Let the committee review them. Are Let you the going to subpoena the, the governor? Well, I think we're, we're, we're not there yet, but clearly Bridget Kelly needs to come in before the committee. I, I think Bill Stepien needs to come in before the committee. Uh, probably Michael Joyniak and others in the governor's office. Uh, Mike, we've been approaching this step by step. And so I'm not going to take a blunderbrust approach and say we're going to bring everybody in because that's just not practical. We're going to take it one at a time. I think the next person logical after David Wildstein is Bridget Kelly. Uh, we didn't need to know what she knew and when she knew it and who gave her the orders to create traffic problems in Fort Lee, and we'll proceed from there. But is it conceivable and possible that you might, in fact, one day subpoena the governor? Well, I think that we're going to ask and we're going to subpoena everybody who's relevant. Uh, right now, we don't have any documentary proof that the governor was involved in this. Uh, like I said, it just strains believability uh, for a person who is such a micromanager, spent a great deal of time today to tell us that he isn't, but we all know that's not true, uh, to say that there are rogue operators in his administration. Look, it says one of two things. Uh, that he was entirely duped and misled by his organization and he doesn't know what's going on, uh, or he's not telling us the truth. I mean, either one is not a pretty outcome for this governor. Mr. Chairman, have to leave it there. Thank you for coming on the program, sir. Thanks, Mike.